at NTV, we're getting into our techno, se techno segment where we're talking about studying abroad. For a number of universities in Uganda, for senior six vacists, you usually think, I can only stay in Uganda. But how about you be able to travel out of the country and get yourself an education? Acquiring education can be cumbersome in many ways, but the task of looking for and identifying that suitable institution beyond Uganda's borders can even be more tedious and more complicated. Whereas there may be numerous opportunities out there, how do you pick out the genuine ones and say, this one will definitely give me the right education that I'm looking out for? What do you need to have in place before embarking on the process of applying for admission in a particular institution? How do you avoid being fleeced? These and more other questions we hope to have answered in our discussion this morning. And with us we have Mr. Alfred Kinyingi, I've been told to pronounce it that way, and um, Mrs. Habiba Khan. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank People you. love studying abroad. You realize it? Definitely. Yeah? Definitely. <laughs> but, but, but you know it's also expensive to, to, to study abroad. It could be. And the co connections are not easy to come around. You are the guys that are connecting us, the people that want to study abroad, yes. with the universities abroad. Sure. First of all, how, how do you guys do it? Where did you, are you guys from abroad as well? Mm -hmm. Uh, not really. We're not from abroad. I think UNISAF is actually a very local company. So UNISAF started in Nairobi and it's been in operation for about 15 years. So we ended up starting in Nairobi and then we just realized like, you know, a lot of people in East Africa need help and the sort of help that we were giving students in Nairobi. So we spread out and we started opening offices in like Tanzania, Uganda, and we, ha we also have an office in uh, Kigali. So that's how we started because we realized there's a lot of potential and there are a lot of students who don't know about opportunities out there or opportunities outside, you know. So everyone just thinks of local universities, but when it comes to like universities abroad, a lot of us are clueless about how to go through the process of application. So that's how we started. You say clueless yes. about the process of application. So um, if I woke up in the morning and a parent out there is watching the show this morning as it is interested in, in taking their child to a university abroad, what are the first steps to take? The very first steps for interested parents is most, most people first go to the internet and yeah. that's why they get confused because with the, this internet uh, age, there are so many things you can get on internet. There's, 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 there's a, a lot. lot. Mm. Yeah. So uh, choosing what's the best, what is real, what because there are so many people who make up even websites for universities that don't exist. That's the first thing is to first come to get an education consultant or an education counselor, which we are. Then they can help you in the whole process of identifying the universities, which one I prefer, the courses, choosing everything. So, okay. so in other words, you're telling people not to go straight to the internet and choose from there. Go to the internet, see what you've seen, mm -hmm. but then come yeah. to you guys so that you can help and authenticate what they have seen Definitely. and see if it's true, if it's, it's if it's the uh, right um, university, mm -hmm. is it existent, mm -hmm. is it the right website? Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys do a background check on that? Before? Yeah, right. in most, most of the universities that we have signed up. With one of our staffs or uh, two of our staffs have visited actually visited the universities. We have definitely visited those universities, so we know the infrastructure, we know how it is, we know most of the things about the universities. And usually, we invite those universities into these countries. Like today, we have an education fair, mm. so the university, the parents are able to have one on one with these university representatives. Okay, as an education consultant, there must be a particular country that most of the people that come to you are asking that this is where I want to get my education from. So, which country is that? Please don't say America. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just don't say America. Okay, go on. <laughs> I, I think uh, we, we, we have a mix of everything, to mm -hmm. be very honest. Uh, UK actually seems to be very popular uh, with a lot of our students, as well as uh, Canada, Australia, and the US. I mean, like we said, we have different programs available for everyone, but it also depends with the duration, and a lot of students seem to prefer the, the UK. UK. Mm -hmm. So we're very big on the UK. In most cases yeah. in Uganda, because of the British curriculum. Yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah. once you're done, it's equally the same. Neocolonialism is still Somehow it's in our brain that when we go to uh, when we go to England, we have going to see our grand grand uh, parents or something. Yeah, like and that. the perfect education. Yeah. And, and I think the quality of education in England is also um, quite top. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about the expense when it comes to education, because one would say, okay, so I've chosen not to go to the internet, but I'm coming to an education consultant. And when you hear of consultants, that means there is a fee that needs to be paid. Mm -hmm. So the expense besides the university, when I walk up and say I'm going to UNISAV and I want to know about which university I can go to. Would it cost me anything? 
Uh, firstly, we do not charge at mm -hmm. UNICEF. So just don't let the word consultant scare you away. I mean, if you go on the website, you should see that we do not charge. Our services are free of charge. So basically what we do is we are employed by the universities. Remember how he was talking about some people just go on the internet and you get all this information and you're fleeced? So we specifically at UNICEF are an agent that are actually paid by the universities to take care of the students. So at no one point do we take any money from the student for anything aside from anything involved with like application fees so if a uni requires you to pay an application fee to assess your application you would do that but you pay that off from your own credit card so we don't take that away from you and of course you have other charges that you would incur for example like uh, visa expenses so we expect you to pay the visa fee because you're doing the visa yourself so mm -hmm. you're supposed to pay for that too so aside from that everything we do with all our services it's free of charge okay yeah. now that is a tick and I'm saying yes if I can be able to go to UNICEF my child perhaps will be getting the right education as a parent mm -hmm. but in case a number of times uh, people have said for a person going for a master's you're more mature yes mm -hmm. but someone who's just going for a bachelor's they still feel they need to be close to home yes. so does UNICEF also be that person that connect that makes sure if I am a parent and I come to you and ask that I want you to check on my child yes. and make sure that they're okay and they're doing the right things do you also take on that role oh <laughs> I can take that. Usually, the, uh, we, we have a personal touch with the universities. In case a student is not doing well at the university or maybe has not attended classes, universities will definitely email us and ask us, please check with this. Or even if there is an issue, in most cases the university will come through us to get to the parents or the parents will come through us to get to the school or something like that. In most cases, But there is always uh, a, a data thing that students have to sign that their information where they are in the university can be shared along with the agent and the parents mm -hmm. so because they are mature enough so they have the the right to say my information can be shared to be with the parent can be shared with the agent in most cases they will do that okay. yeah. you, you guys are consultants and you're middlemen in this in, in this we can call you that um, w what are the hardships you, you 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 have seen so far because there's a big number of people that want to study in Europe mm -hmm. in most cases the most the, the, the biggest challenge it comes when there is a misunderstanding between the parents and the student. Maybe the student wants to do music, mm -hmm. oh, and, the, yeah. uh -huh, and the, the dad wants him to be a pharmacist. Mm. So that's usually one of the challenges we face, but we are able to sort it out. Uh, sometimes we will suggest these students can take uh, double majors, yeah, he can major in pharmacy and maybe minor in music, so at least you, have, you strike a balance between both. Okay. Yeah. There's, there are other challenges, but mostly it's usually how to connect the parents and the student. Mm. With, yeah. Does UNICEF do anything about scholarships? Yeah, because I must tell you, whenever people <laughs> think of going abroad, it's always it like, are you on a scholarship? Yes, yeah. it's, it's quite expensive. So for some of the universities that you partner with and you're saying, do they have possibilities of scholarships? Uh, so we do. We work with a lot of universities. And yes, sometimes we do have the scholarships. You know, when you go and say there are scholarships, everyone just comes and says, you know, my grades are very good. Scholarship. I want a scholarship. <laughs> so uh, these uh, scholarships normally have, you know, like a criteria or a requirement that you need to fulfill. And sometimes we do have full scholarships. Others would be partial scholarships. And sometimes different organizations, for example, like Commonwealth and Shivni, those are organizations that give master's students like full scholarships but students have to go online check on the requirements see if they meet all the requirements to apply and then they can of course come to UNICEF after they've identified the units that they want to apply to and would assist them you know with doing their personal statements and all those things to submit for the scholarship but if we do have institutions that we work with that advertise or say they have a scholarship normally we post all that information on the website so that if you can, if you want to come and you're looking for a scholarship please go on our website to see how much we're offering because sometimes it's not a full scholarship so when you come to the office at least you have an idea that it's either thousand pounds you're getting or two thousand pounds off so you're able to understand what is required from you okay you mm -hmm. mentioned that today there is a fair yes, yes. So I know that it's the UK University's fair yeah. yeah so if I walk in what do I expect to maybe perhaps be helped with do I have to come in with all my documents right now and say this is what I want. And you get a backpack. Uh -huh. <laughs> I come with everything today. <laughs> 
Yes, today we have an education fair. It's a UK education fair. We have over 30, 30 universities actually, 30 universities from the UK. What students expect today is to have one-on-one -on -one chat with the universities. If you have all your documents, you could get on-spot offers. Mm. Yeah, And sometimes they want to have a feel of who to, a face that they can place on the other side. So when they get to school, you'll see some, oh, you are in Uganda or something like that. So basically it's just an information gathering session. Yeah, before maybe some will have made up their mind, like I want to go to this university, they are present, then let's apply. Mm -hmm. Others will just move around and talk to a few universities, then they'll be able to make a decision. So it's a basically information gathering session. Where is it and is it free? <laughs> you gonna free <laughs> price yeah, tags the, to everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the entrance is free. Mm -hmm. Everyone feel free to come with their parents or with their documents or everything. And it's at Golf Course Hotel from ten AM to six PM. Okay. You don't have to be there the whole day. You could be there for an hour, mm. gather the information you want, and leave. So it's not a, it's not like a conference. It's a one-on-one -on -one session with the universities. Okay. Yeah. So parents and uh, uh, the kids out there, uh, parents don't deny your, <laughs> your children uh, the opportunity to study abroad. It's it's, it's quite um, uh, a good one. It gives a child uh, an age, maybe, mm. from uh, the, 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 the students go to uh, local universities. And the students out there, if this is an opportunity for you, you can uh, uh, just go and do some window shopping. Um, but this time around, it's education kind of shopping. You go around, uh, look around at uh, the fair and see what interests you and hopefully you can convince your parents when you get home so that they can enroll you in one of these universities and the guys here um, will be there in case you need any help uh, they'll be able to take you through what you need and um, give you do you have a list do you give them a list of everything that they need so that they can go and, and, and check on that in terms of the university or in terms yeah, of yes, in, in, in case someone comes in and decides, yeah. you know, the this is the university I want to go to, um, do they give you a whole list of what you need to go and share with your parents? And, and, and Yes, you'll get a list of everything that you'll need from yeah. the, the application process. So that you can tick. Yeah, so that you can tick everything. Yeah. Once you have these documents, you can come back to our offices. Okay. We have an office in Kampala. Where SM, is it? We are on SM Chambers, opposite the Kampala Serena. Okay. First floor. It's on King to Road. Okay. okay. So wha if you don't have the documents today, feel free to come any other time to office. We work Monday to Saturday or any time. Okay. And as we okay. leave, for okay. a person who can't attend the fair, who can't actually be able to come in to Kampala right now and meet you at your office, mm -hmm. social media, where can they reach you? Because you do mention the website. Yeah. What is the website? Mm -hmm. Uh, th the website is www.chilisaveducation.com. They should get the information there. Now, if you go on the website, we have all our offices listed there and uh, the location of the offices plus all the numbers and emails shared. So it doesn't matter where you are. You might be in East Africa somewhere and you're listening to this. So please, you can go online and get that information. We're also on Facebook and that's uh, UNICEF Education. You can search us and you'll get us there to get more information and just see what other students are doing and what we're doing in our other offices as well as on Instagram, it's UNICEF Education. Okay, yeah. there we go. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Alfred Kinyingi. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that. And um, uh, Mr. Habiba Khan from uh, UNICEF. Uh, the fair is on today, so you can go and check it out. And hopefully you can find something that suits your need. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we had for Take Note. We're going to be back in a few minutes. Morning at NTV continues. Mala is going to be here to give you a business update. And of course, uh, I promise that this week I'm going to give you some serving and today uh, before we end the show I am going to be serving all the men out there I got angry over the weekend all the men wow. out there that go to bars you go for m m massage parlors and everything while your kids are at home hey, hungry I thought no no we'll, we'll, we'll get into that we'll, we'll get we'll so get into that the we'll get into kids that. Will be talking about the we'll, we'll get into Monday, that. but David is going we'll to be talking about that. the men yes. when we get back and we also have a traffic update Are you in Kampala, East, West, Central, or the northern parts of Uganda? Daily Monitor has got you covered every weekday with revamped regional news coverage. Grab yourself a copy and know what's happening in your area. Daily Monitor. Truth every day. To enhance your weekends, your long